Welcome to the Secrets of Engineering, the Gwai Shangani Dam. The Gwai Shangani Dam, standing 76 meters high, will be the third biggest dam in Zimbabwe, with a total storage of 691,140 megaliters of water. From the waters of the Gwai Shangani River rises the third concrete arch dam structure. It is a gorge dam with a maximum height of 72 meters and a maximum water standing at 61 meters deep, and the crest length is 361.24 meters. It is the pinnacle of dam engineering. It has taken a workforce of 400 people and can go as high as 700 at peak times. The crew was privileged to capture this amazing feat of engineering. Hey, my name is Engineer Dengu. Hey, I'm the resident engineer for the project, Gwai uh, Shangani Dam project, for the dam. Uh, I've been with the, 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 the Zinwa for, for maybe 30 years. I've, I've done, previously I've done uh, Pubilupane Dam in Mad North, Pubilupane Dam in Mad North, and the Togum Ghost Dam in, in Mashingo, Togum Ghost, I was a resident engineer for Togum Ghost. The rest of the year for Pubilupane in Mat North and the Munti Mataga in, in Berengwa. So now I'm here to, I think, <laughs> retire the Gwai Shangani. <laughs> the Gwai Shangani Dam site is located in Matebelele North, province of Zimbabwe. It is on the Gwai River, six kilometers downstream of the river's confluence with Shangani River. It is about 270 kilometers by road northwest of Lawayo on the grid reference NK180586 of map number 182783, TV of the Surveyor General 1 in 50,000 map series. Access is gained off the Blawayo Victoria Force Road. At the turn off to Wanga National Park, there is to the right a narrow tarred road to the now defunct Gwai River Mine. Access is via the lateral road and is about 7.6 kilometers is a track to the right leading to the upstream left bank of the dam site. This track is about 13.1 kilometers long. The 330 kilovolt power line crosses the Gray River about 600 meters downstream of the dam site. The dam is a, a is an gravity arch dam, which is a, and the method of construction is the roller compacted concrete. RCC dams, this is the first RCC dam to construct in Zimbabwe. The initial design was a normal vibrated concrete like the uh, Kyle Dam or Mutiriku Dam or Kariba Dam. But uh, because of this the development in methods of construction in dams around the world, we adopted the RICC, which is a faster method of construction and uh, it shortens our construction period and uh, its machine incentive and the efficiency of uh, construction is higher on, on, on RICC dams in terms of uh, uh, time period and the uh, benefit of the product before when we, because we finish earlier than, than, the, than, the, than the normal vibrated concrete. So, uh, programming is very critical on this type of dam and uh, this programming will give us a better product basically in terms of integrity of structure so uh, what we we really need to to, to 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 insist on is continuity of construction the contract of the construction of the guashangani dam was initially awarded to china international water and electric corporation by the material and zambezi water trust in may 2003. the material and zambezi water trust was a private body which was mandated by government to raise funds for the project. The State Procurement Board was then not responsible for that award. The project took off, but it did not progress as expected between 2002 and 2012 due to funding challenges. The government therefore resolved to take over the project under the Public Sector Investment Program, and due diligence exercise was carried out in 2012 before the takeover by the government. The contract for the construction of the Guashangani Dam was awarded to the same contractor, China International Water and Electric Corporation. 
through the State Procurement Board Resolution PBR number 2091 of 22 November 2012. The contract was signed on the 21st of December 2012 and the contractor commenced works on the 9th of January the following year. The then agreed completion date of the contract was 11 December 2014, making a two-year construction period. However, the project suffered cash flow challenges due to late payment of interim payment certificates by the employer. My temporary, the North Province generally doesn't have good sites. This is the best site in, in my North Province. That's why we came to this site. It's the best site because of the gorge. It's a U-shaped gorge, which is perfect for, 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 for a concrete arch dam, gravity arch or so. But the, 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 the foundations are a bit broken up. We've got fractured foundations. So that's why we, 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 we zeroed in on the gravity arch, which transfers its loads to the, to the foundation and the site. It's not a pure arch, but it's a gravity arch. Some of the loads is taken to the foundation, some of it is to the, to the site of the dam. And uh, we, we have an extensive grouting program to, to strengthen our foundation in terms of uh, consolidation of the, of the foundation. We got a massive consolidation grouting program, and then uh, the grout, curtain, normal curtain grouting process for the dam to stop the seepage from going through under the dam. The existing water supply dams for Blower City are located in the Mzingone catchment to the south of the city. The water resources of this catchment are becoming strained due to the variability of the rainfall pattern. The yield for the existing dams is therefore no longer adequate to meet the city's water demand. To the north of the city, Zagwai catchment and the nearest suitable dam site in the catchment to provide adequate water in the short term is the Gwai Shangani Dam, located 245 kilometers away and 6 kilometers downstream of the confluence of the Gwai and Shangani rivers. It is envisioned that the water will be conveyed from the dam to Blaoya City by a pipeline with a series of booster pump stations along the pipeline. It is also proposed that the dam yield will be eventually augmented by water pump from the Zambezi River through a separate pipeline to Bulawayo. The two pipelines would meet at Kennedy and follow the rail line for 122 kilometers up to Cowdery Park in Bulawayo, where a water pump treatment station and storage reservoirs will be constructed. The Gwai Shangani Dam scheme and the Zambezi River scheme combined are called the National Matibalil and Zambezi Water Project. The Gwai Shangani Dam is therefore only a component of that project. In addition to Bulawayo City, the National Matibele and Zambezi Water Project will supply water to institutions along the pipeline and irrigators to a corridor of land along the pipeline. There are vast deposits of coal in the area close to the dam site where there has been an interest to open new coal mines and to set up thermal power stations within that area. The Guayshangani Dam has been cited as a preferred source of water by some of the interested potential investors in the local coal mines and the thermal power stations. This is our pipe manufacturing workshop. We import uh, the, the metal sheets. Are it flat like this? Flat like this? Real. We are coming to the cutting bench where we cut to the size we want the metal pieces to be. After that, we go to a rolling machine, which is behind the, the, the welding machines. We roll the pipe to the size we want. After rolling, we weld the pipes with those two welding machines. Then we, we weld all the joints, make sure the pipes are the correct size. Then we send them for the workshop where we send blast and start painting them, ready for delivery to site for, for installation. So this is the, this workshop we established in January 2022, and we started making pipe, pipes in 2023, 20, and uh, we think we have made the 77 meters of pipe, uh, of the two meter diameter pipe, and we, we want to, our target is to make 150 meters of pipe and they may be utilized this manufacturing plant for the pipeline to blow out to manufacture all the steel sections for the pipeline to, to Lawai.
So we are going to use the, the, the guys who are doing the welding are local guys. We are translating all the knowledge to, to our local, uh, local, local welders and the uh, fitters and the, and the entertainers. These ones are, the, the, the plates are imported from South Africa. You know, Cisco still is closed. They, use, they would come, but these are imported from, we, we import them as plates. They come with trucks from South Africa. We receive maybe yeah, two, two, two trucks every month for our purposes of use on site. This is the finished pipe after the, the, the rolling and the welding. We come, then we do the sand blasting to, 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 to bring a fresh surface before we do the painting. And the, after the painting, then these ones we put, because if you are not utilizing the, the pipe immediately, we want to maintain the roundness of the pipe. So these bars are for maintaining the roundness of the pipe. When we go to install the purple pipe, we have to cut them off and repaint where it's connected to the, to the pipe. And uh, we then carry it to the, to the site for installation. These are eight meter length. And we use the crane to lift, carry it down, the, and the crane to, to install. Uh, the, world, the final world to join the other pipe, we do on site. So there will be serious welding we do. Uh, in, the, in, the, in the workshop, after we finish Welding, we do an x-ray test on the welds to see whether they are sealed. They, they are 100% they are sealed. So we got an x-ray machine, which, but we use it in the middle of the night so that it doesn't affect the radiation. That's why we do the test for checking the, all the welds before we start the painting. This is 100% manufactured on site. It's, we only implant the 10 millimeter plates. From South Africa. But if we start producing steel here, we are going to import, take it from, from Chief Utu to this place and, and roll it and make a product is 100% Zimbabwean product. We are going to do about uh, 20 of these, 20 of these for the, for the, the power station. And the, the orders for the main pipeline to Blaya are not yet clear, but I think we are going to utilize this workshop to make also for the, for the steel sections required for, for the pipeline to, to blow on. These are for the galleries, for the, in the galleries which we, which we walked through yesterday. We have to make the precast form so that we just place it in and the concrete comes outside and we got the gallery inside. So this one made here, we, we basically use the 13 millimeter stone and the, the, sh the shutter is here, we, 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 we fabricate the concrete, we, 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 we cure using the, this, this blanket. <laughs> That's how we do this, this precast. We, we, we still got another gallery to do, so we want to continue doing this when we start in the in, 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 in end of February. We keep our, from the quarry, we, we store our, our aggregates in these sheds to keep the temperatures low. Because our concrete, we want to remain in the, uh, the low temperatures. That's why they, we invested in, in doing the cooling sheds. So that we, we, the direct, we don't have direct heat on the, on the, on the aggregates. So we got the sheds for the 80 millimeter 40 and the, the 20 millimeter and the, and the river sand. So this is our main storage for, 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 for the aggregates before we, we send them to the batching plant. These are the bins for the batching plant. We got the 80, the 40, the 20 and the river sand ready for going to the mixer from this stage. Uh, the other uh, beans for the other uh, batching plant are on the other side, and the, the arrangement is just as you are seeing there. We got a 120, 120 cubic meter batching plant on the south side. This one is a 180 cubic meter batching plant on this side. This one is the 80 millimeter stone. 80 millimeter stone, we got the 40 millimeter and the 20 millimeter stone. And the river scent is, is, is the, yeah, this is normal river scent is saved from, the, from those other two plants which we saw for saving river scent and the, uh, the other two plants for the aggregate. There's a, conveyor, there's a smaller bin which leads to, to the conveyor belt. So if we, we are making 80 millimeter uh, concrete. 
we open the bin there, it goes to the conveyor belt, down, the, it goes then the another conveyor belt to the, to the mixing plant. So we open the requirement for this one, this one, and that one, they all go. First, the, 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 the bigger stone, the, the smaller stone, the, 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 the river sand, then we send it down. Then on the conveyor, they go to the, to the missing plant, which is, which is on, the, on the main batching plant. So these are all on conveyor belt. All electric on, on, on Zesa, we are, we, are, we are running this on Zesa. Though we got an emergency for generator power, generator power is expensive. So when we start making concrete on generator power, it becomes <laughs> slightly more expensive. But we, we, are, we are on Zesa, basically. This is our water supply tank. It's got a cooling system inside uh, for speeding the water to the plant. Uh, our materials come through this conveyor into the uh, mixing plant. Our water from there, our cement comes by compressor into the plant. Then we mix for uh, 10, 10, 14, 10 minutes. 10 minutes, uh, I think our concrete will be ready. We produce six cubic, six cubic meters every session. Uh, these, are, these, th these are for cement. The one is, that one is for fly ash. Because we need more storage for cement. Cement, fly ash, we can store it outside. But cement, we can't store it outside. So the three are cement, 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 one fly ash. Yeah. So these ones are all pressurized to, to by, by compressor to, to pump the cement into, the, into this machine. So there's a pipe which is coming from all those tanks to the mixing machine. So when we, uh, we say we want uh, 150 kgs, it sucks 150 kgs and closes. <laughs> 150 kgs of fly ash, it closes. Uh, we have put in the, the amount of water we want, 180 liters. After that, it closes. Uh, it's, got a, it's computerized. When all the ingredients are enough, it shuts all the valves for supply. Then we start mixing. Because once you start mixing, you are now making concrete. It's another process. The, if you mix it, it starts producing it. So you can you can when you have to, to end, when you have put the ingredients, then you start mixing. After you start mixing, the concrete process, the concreting process already started. The hydration process already starts. So the heat of the hydration starts getting produced. So we have to calculate the time from start mixing up to the time we place to see the workability of the concrete, whether it's still allowable with the parameters we have for testing. Because we, after we make the concrete there, we take a sample, we see whether it's conforming to the specified parameters in terms of workability, uh, what do you call it, uh, slump. Uh, if it's the normal concrete, the, 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 the RCC, we don't do slump because it doesn't slump, it's, it's stiff. But we, we, check the, we take a, a, a cube sample and uh, test the moisture and the, the density of that, of that, uh, of the RCC concrete when it's manufactured here. Welcome back to Zim Major Projects. We are still at Gwai uh, Shangani Dam. Uh, yesterday we showed the shoot with the level of the, of the water on the coffer dam at about the uh, age 56.5. Now we are one, one, one and a half meters higher than that level, and we are discharging around 3,000 cubic meters a second. Currently, from the ice we are getting from the gauging station, we are getting upstream of the of the of the Gwai, Gwai River Bridge. You can see how much we lose every year to, to the Zambezi River. Uh, I mean, this happens every year, and for the I, I don't know how many centuries back, <laughs> it has been happening like this. 
So that's why we need to, to finish this dam by Shangani, so that we harness all this, this water for use uh, to, to feed blower and uh, do some irrigation schemes around the Shangani Dam, Binga, Wanke, and, uh, and uh, Lubana. Uh, here we are just trying to show you how much flow we go through this river. And it has not yet gone to its maximum, but in two, in, from yesterday, in 24 hours, we have got this rise in flood on the on, on site. So this is how much, this happens every year, and we, we, we are losing all this water to, to the Indian Ocean. I guess, I guess it makes us think about how we have, we have to increase our harnessing of water projects in this country. Well, and, and now I will, I will explain to you the, the setup here. Here we have got the coffer dam, which, which was uh, done in, 19, in the 60s for Gwai River mine, but we are using it as a coffer dam for the construction of the main, uh, main, uh, main dam at the Gwai Shangan dam. Uh, the coffer dam makes us able to, to, to work on the, on the foundation of the main dam whilst we stop the water through this coffer dam and we can work on the foundations and uh, start works to, to build the dam. Uh, so it's very useful for us. It's, it's, a, it's a diversion tool for us. We divert the water through the coffer dam and uh, we, we manage to do all the works on the dry riverbed to, to start construction. Our dam is at level 83, the main dam, but we left some some diversion channels on the dam to manage the flooding during construction. That's why I've got those two holes on the dam. It's for managing diversion during construction. I can, you can see the water on the diversion ch channel is risen by about one, one and a half, one, one, one point one meters from yesterday. So we are discharging more water through the river. Uh, and the arch shape you see is the gravity arch of the dam. This is the arch of the dam transferring the load to, to the abutments of the, of the structure. That's why it's circular like that. Even the smaller dam is circular like that because it, it, it transfers its load to the, to the abutments of the dam. That's why we've got the arch step. So that one, plus the gravity section, part of the load is transferred to the, to the foundation because of the nature of this site. It's, it's a wide U shape, so we've got to use a structure like that. A complete arch with the foundation will be more difficult for us because of the uh, nature of our foundations on the abutment. Our, our full supply level is 906. 906 is where the spillway level is. So the dam at that level will be behaving like this small dam, at this, at that level. And the, uh, that limiting full supply level is because of the Y River Bridge on the Pitfalls Road. That's why we limited our full supply to 906. At high flood, the Gwai River Bridge, the full supply will be 1.8 below the Gwai River Bridge. 